Hi everybody, my name is Brian Wagner. I'm the author of the book, Sometimes It Does Take a Brain Surgeon. You know, that book is based on my story of having brain surgery back in 2011, when we had to understand that, you know, life has changed. You know, I'm not gonna be able to, to have the same lifestyle, the same, you know, um, uh, goals, the same, uh, uh, friends, literally, I mean, my friends have changed because so much has changed around me. That having a brain surgery, having brain surgery has allowed me to have a much better understanding, well, a much better understanding of, of who I am. And I would say that having that understanding has allowed me to pursue my purpose with a much greater focus. Now, I say focus, and you may think, oh, Brian, that's cute. Um, you know, you're partially blind or, or visually impaired. And you say focus. But everything we talk about at a radical vision has to do with focus, or it has to do with purpose. And it could also have to do with, you know, just having a more clear understanding of what it is that you are supposed to be doing what it is that you are meant to be doing. A Radical Vision is really an organization that has helped us to have a better understanding of what it is that we do. So what it is that we do is we help people all across the world to really get to a point where they have a, they have clarity. Clarity is really where it's at. So once they have clarity on their purpose, then they're able to have that paradigm shift. The paradigm shift, much like I had after having brain surgery, everything changed. So I went from being in IT sales to dropping it off, well, a few years later, and pursuing this, my passion. My passion is to help you, to help you to get what you want. And what you want doesn't always mean it's what you need. So to get what you want, you have to be able to understand what you need. Think about how, you know, when you first started walking down this path of life and you, you entered into a career and you thought, okay, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to make widgets for the rest of my life and, you know, I'll have a, a a retirement 401k, you know, have some money set aside, you know, whatever. And then everything changed. What do you do? <laughs> That's what happened to me. I needed to understand that when everything changed, I needed to change myself. So I changed on the outside and it forced me to change on the inside. And that's a conversation that I'd love to have with people when it comes to understanding how are they supposed to be interacting with the people around them? How are they supposed to be interacting with the world? Well, one of the ways that I do that is with this thing called the Joe Harry window. Now, the Joe Harry window, if you think of it, draw, if you have a piece of paper and a pen, actually, Go get a piece of paper and a pen. I'll wait. Hit pause and I'll be right here. Got it? Now, draw on the piece of paper a window, if you will, a, a rectangular box, and then separate it into four panes. Now, in this first pane here, so it'll be in your upper left, first pane here will be pane number one. If you move to the right, it'll be pane number two. Now, go back, go back to your left, and go down. That will be considered pane number three. And then, moving to your right again, it'll be pane number four. Okay, so, now, we have the picture drawn, we understand the window in terms of one, two, three, and four, but let me tell you what those windows represent. If you look on the top, of that window. Over top of pane number one, I want you to write 
things that you know. Now, over top of pane number two, I want you to write things that you don't know. I'll wait for you. Got it? All right, now, to the left of that pane number one, write things that people know. <clears throat> Under it, for pane number three, write things that people don't know. So think about that. Understand that there are things that you know and things you don't know, and then there are things that other people know and other people don't know. <clears throat> and those are things of really about you. So things that people know about you and things that other people don't know about you. Pain number one, that's the sweet spot. That's where you want to be. That is where you know things and people know things about you. That's, you want to be able to try to expand that window if you can, that, that pain. So you're going to expand it into the window number two, expand it into window number or pane number three, and expand it into pane number four if you can. You do that by soliciting feedback. That's the first way, is to solicit feedback from the people that are on your team. So if you're a leader, you want to be able to solicit feedback. And when you solicit feedback, you have to understand that feedback is a gift. And what do you say when you receive a gift? Thank you. That's how you should handle feedback. You have to receive it as a gift. So first thing is solicit feedback. That may help you to expand into pain number two, that second quadrant, if you will. That is by soliciting feedback. <clears throat> and by the way, this pain number two is really your blind spot. So if you think of that, that blind spot, those are things that y other people know, but you don't know. So there are other people know. Remember, we put over there in this, this corner, um, other people know along that line. And on top, there are things that you don't know. So you don't know and other people know. That is your blind spot. That's your blind area. Okay, now let's go down to quadrant number three and talk about quadrant number three because that is another area where you're going to be able to grow. You can grow in that area by becoming more vulnerable. If you become more vulnerable, whether you're a leader or a team member, that is going to allow you to be able to shrink that area. So you're going to make area number one bigger this way and then bigger this way as well because you're going to be able to get more people to understand what kind of person it is. What motivates you? What emotions do you have? What are, what are some of the things that are going on in your personal life? All of that really matters when it comes to knowing the person that you're working with. You know, now you may say, oh, but Brian, I, I don't like to do that. I don't like to share that kind of information. You know, I don't like to have people know my business. Well, you know, that's, understand. I understand where you're coming from, but the more they know, the better they are going to be as your teammate, as your leader, as your friend. Oh, but Brian, I don't want them to be my friend. They're, they're my teammates. They're, they're the people I work with. Again, in order to have a more cohesive team, a more cohesive team that is more productive and efficient, you are going to want to have more vulnerability. You, and it doesn't mean you have to tell them your deepest, darkest secrets. You want to be able to share with them the pertinent things that will help to make them and you better teammates. So that's the third area. That is the area where you need to become more vulnerable to expand that quadrant number one. Quadrant number one, pain number one, remember, those are the same things. Then you go to this fourth box and you look at it and you say, well, things that other people don't know and things that I don't know. What kind of sense does that make? <laughs> well, 
I'm getting to that, let me tell you. So think of someone that's coming out of college or coming straight out of high school and they're joining your team. There are certain things, skill sets that they have that they really don't know. Well, if they're coming straight out of college or high school, there are things that you don't know either. It's skill sets that have been untapped. And if you're able to tap them, then you're going to be able to really have a better understanding of the person that you have on your team. Well, why would I put this person on my team if, you know, I didn't know their skill sets? Well, you're at sometimes you're going to have to take a leap of faith because you may know the type of person that they are. You may know some of their family members. You may know a little bit about them and their history. But you have a sense that they would be right for your team. Now, then when they join your team and you really have them in quadrant number four, you get to understand them better. They get to know you better. That's when you begin to shrink quadrant number four. And that's really what you want to do because this is the area that's the most dangerous. It's the most dangerous because it, it could be a great potential, it could be a bad potential. It just depends on the synergy and the uh, chemistry of the team. So understand the, the Johari window. The whole point of the Johari, Johari window, actually, and the Johari window was created, I'll back up a little bit, it was created in 1955 by two guys. Um, they were psychologists. One guy, his name was Joe and the other guy's name was Harry. <laughs> that is why it is named the Joe Harry window. Good thing that Harry didn't get top billing because that would just be weird. Anyway, so the Joe Harry window is all about gaining self-awareness. If you gain self-awareness as a leader and as a team member, then magic is gonna start to happen. So, there's some things that we can talk about in terms of helping you to become more vulnerable, helping you to solicit feedback, helping you to be able to do the things you need to do to understand your skill set, to understand your purpose, to understand why are you here and why are you on this team. Those things are team building exercises and you're like, oh, well, Brian, I don't want to, I don't want to talk about team building exercises. That doesn't help. You know, I've done those kind of things before. Again, you have to be open-minded. You have to be open-minded enough to be able to be vulnerable so you can have a much better team. This is where a decision has to be made. The decision has to be made. Are you going to go by with what you have today and just suck it up? Or do you want to challenge yourself to experience new things, to really understand the rest of your team in a much, much better way? Because that is where you are going to be able to be much more productive, much more efficient. You're going to have so much more fun. And I promise you that this is where your future changes forever. Thank you.